What's up, everyone? It's your boy NornRad89 here, bringing another rad movie review. Today we're going to be talking about Nolan's mind-bending time travel flick, Tenet. I finally got a chance to see it last night, so let's talk about it. Non-spoiler review. Roll it. So Tenet is Christopher Nolan's new mind-bending time travel film. It's starring John David Washington and Robert Pattinson. It's about our main character, the protagonist, who is recruited by an organization that is basically here to stop it, like stuff from the future, you know, past that will threaten us, things that are coming to now time from the future to threaten us. There's a billionaire Russian man named Sir, oh, Sater. And he is a Russian billionaire who is tasked with trying to put together an artifact that contains an algorithm that will basically kind of destroy our time now. And so that is what the film's core is centrally about. So let's get to talking about the positives of this film. And for me, a big positive definitely right off the bat is it has a classic Nolan style to it, the pacing of it and just... A lot of the vibe of it and the way that it feels, the sounds and everything, it just has a very classic Nolan vibe. Definitely feels like Dark Knight or Inception. You can see the mirror of like the things he likes to do, but this one kind of has more of a 007 Bond feel. Christopher Nolan is actually a huge James Bond fan, and you can definitely tell he has like a love for that genre because the first part of this movie, probably the first third of this movie, is very kind of like a spy espionage type flick but it's still very enjoyable to watch these characters kind of dive into this world and you're along for the ride and everything and then once we get fully immersed into the idea of inversion and time travel and all that kind of stuff it takes a whole nother route and a whole nother realm and becomes one of the coolest films that I've seen in most recent years in terms of like cinematography and things and ways like thinking of ways that they could have shot that it is a very intricate film and very choreographed and you can tell like when you're watching it you're like your mind is wondering like I wonder really how they decided to film this and it's a really great piece just very epic and stuff that you haven't seen on screen necessarily before so that's why it's great to always go see a Christopher Nolan movie because he's definitely going to bring you something in some form or fashion, he's going to bring to the table something that you've never really seen before, and that's why it's always fun to enjoy his movies. We also get some really great sets and just some great locales in this film. There's beautiful scenery all over this movie. There's yachts. like Just, just imagine like Bruce Wayne's budget times 20. Like That's what this movie has. It has so many locales, so many amazing places and like sets and buildings and stuff like that. And like I said, yachts and just amazing pictures and all that kind of stuff. Scenery that you love to look at. So that's definitely top notch. It also has some really cool, interesting, like kind of core characters that keep you along for the ride. And you're kind of focused on this one main character, the protagonist. You're you're through his view most of the way and just kind of seeing everybody else like kind of come in line and step into his world. This is still, like I said, a great written piece. It has the amazing writing that you're always going to want from a Nolan film. There's a lot of exposition, and a lot of it has to do with just telling you about inversion and what's happening. But it's like it's just to kind of give you that info because if you were to watch it without that kind of info, it's still it would be kind of a complicated movie, more complicated. It still has complex issues and things about it, but I think it would be more complicated if you didn't have some of those exposition spots. And the action is also something that I thoroughly enjoy. The action, like I said, has that good Nolan style of like, oh, that's amazing shots and like wondering how they did that actual fighting scenes and the battle scenes and everything. They're just very interesting. And like they could be very loud, but they're very interesting as well and cool to look at. So let's get down to talking about some of the negatives for this movie. As for me, some of the negatives, I could have done with a little more explanation about the actual machine that the villain, our antagonist character, Sator, uses to mess with time and time travel and everything. There could have been a little more explanation about the actual machine and the tech that he builds. There really isn't like a lot about that at all. And some of the characters in this movie, you see them in the trailer too, but some of the characters in this movie, you literally see like their full scenes 
in the trailer. Like they're literally just there to push the the movie forward. Like they're not actual characters. They're just there to give you info to get us to the next part of the movie, to get us to the next part of the movie. So there's some characters in here, like I said, they're just kind of just there for exposition and they're not really used for anything else at all. Like they probably don't even have names, I think. <laughs> but that is another negative. And there's some parts in this film where their characters talking like I love Nolan's music and I love the soundtracks and the sound effects he uses but there's some parts in this movie where it got extremely loud during just talking like just randomly like two people talking sitting on two chairs looking at each other talking and then like music just popping up and coming out of nowhere and just getting louder like a symphony like that kind of thing was a little irritating and it kind of bugged me but it was just, it wasn't a lot of parts. It was just a couple of parts here and there that were kind of really like that. I was just like, what? Like, I'm trying to listen, and the music just keeps getting louder, and it might have not been very important. But I do like dialogue, and I love writing, and I like character development. So I want, I want to listen to things. So when it gets louder, and the sound and the music kind of overtakes the actual talking, it's like, eh, that's, so that's a hurtful thing. But overall, in my book, this is still a really great Nolan film. I definitely recommend renting it because it's going to give you something that you've never seen on film before. It might take a couple watches to really unpack and dive into the full film and enjoy it. But I still do really like this film. In my book, Tenant's going to get a solid 8 out of 10. It's definitely a rent it for sure, and I recommend watching it. And like I said, maybe give it a couple times so that way you can unpack everything and really fully enjoy the film. But it's still a really cool film, and I liked it. I'm going to return to it and watch it again so I could fully grab all the Easter eggs all over it. Thanks for hanging out with me, guys, for another rad movie review. Leave a like and hit that subscribe button if you want to stay up to date on all the comment, all, all the content that I put out and everything. If I could speak, and I would love to have some more subscribers so you guys could come check out everything. I would love to hear from all of you too in the comment section, letting me letting me know what you thought of the film. Thanks for hanging out with me, guys. Peace out.